Unless you're a musician or you work in the music business, you might never have the opportunity to actually visit a recording studio, to see all the things that go into the making of a record, the moments of inspiration, the give and take between the musicians, the moments of frustration, all the subtleties, all the fine points that mean the difference between a good record and a great record. I'm Mark Goodman. MTV visited with Daryl Hall and John Oates in the studio as they recorded their new album called H2O. We had the rare opportunity to watch Daryl and John as they developed a new song called Go Solo. We watched it grow from the sketch of an idea to its final form here on the record. This gospel piece. You know, if Daryl writes a song or if I write a song, we already have a predetermined uh, goal in mind and what we want the song to come out as. There's, there's happy accidents along the way and, and you know, inspiration and things that, uh, other things that come into play. Yeah. The band play psychiatrists we write songs it's not even songs it's anything it's mm -hmm. art it's art in general uh, that's why people do it it's something that's inside you that has to come out and the closer you get to that to that natural expression the better you're gonna feel about it I think so I figured that would be the second half of the of the verse and also, to, to also bridge across and also under the solo as well right yeah solo will be yeah totally that's a good idea. idea yeah I didn't think of that actually and then it just leaves it Hidden away between the storefronts on 8th Street in New York's Greenwich Village sits Electric Lady Studios, the recording studios built by the legendary Jimi Hendrix. These are the studios that Daryl Hall and John Oates chose to record their new album, H2O. Each album project is a challenge to us as, as writers first, to, to first come up with the material and have songs that we really love and really are excited about. If that happens, the album seems to come together very easily, you know, and that's our challenge. Uh, and we have different standards of success and, and achievement than what the outside has. You know, we have our own standards. And, uh, yeah. you know, we're not trying to live up to private eyes. We're trying to live up to things that might have, you know, that only mean something to us. The band that we have here in the studio is the same band that we're on the road with. It's, uh, and, you know, uh, a few of them have been with us for a really long time. Uh, a couple of them are new. Uh, we have uh, Mickey Curry, who joined us last year for the Private Eyes album on drums. And we have a new member named uh, T-Bone Tom Wolk, who's uh, our bass player. We have uh, G.E. Smith on guitar, who's been with us, I think this is the third, fourth album. All right, let's do it. Okay. You ready in there, Neil? Yeah. You rolling? Yeah, All right, let's do it. Go ahead. The basic foundation of any song is the rhythm track. The feeling that's generated at these sessions will determine the direction the song takes later on in the recording process. That's, that's the hardest thing because you have to deal with tempos and it's very concentrated and you have to get all the energy into the, the rhythm track. That's the real basis of a song. One more should be the one. That's just a little bit shaky towards the end. We can do one better one. Right. I certainly hope so. Neil Kernan, the co-producer and engineer for the H2O sessions, has worked with Daryl and John on their last two albums. With Go Solo, the first time when Daryl played it for me, the way to go with it was 
Just big, very dramatic, very, you know, it kept the emotion in it. It's a very personal song, in a sense. Tempo's great. Yeah. Tempo's happening. After the basic tracks were recorded, Daryl and John wanted to fill in the parts of Go Solo that sounded too empty. They decided to add a synthesizer to help flesh out the song. So, Larry, you're going to um, want something that's kind of like an organ type sound but has the power of, of a string section. How's that for a great right. description? We want something synthesizer that's... wizard Larry Fast was brought in to help out with the overdubs. Fast designs as well as plays synthesizers, and he's been working with John and Daryl for more than five years. <laughs> How about something for the um, for the uh, chorus? For the chorus, like a, well, something that's going okay. To How about the, the melody? How about something like um, like completely different? Is this for the, the Flu chorus? Like flutey sound? Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Mellotron. Yeah, like a, yeah, like, like an old mellotron, mellotron sound. Like a mellotron flute sound. Yeah, yeah. How do you get these things so fast? I know where they are now. What was your original surname? <laughs> do you think you should play it um, like the quarter notes, or do you think you should just play backbeats? <laughs> you mean like on two and four? <laughs> Maybe it's better on, on two and four than and quarter notes. Right. Right. I don't know. Well, try that both might work. Ways. Yeah, try it both ways and see which sure. sounds best. Ready when you are. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. <laughs> The thing that we enjoy most out of everything is overdubs because that's where the textures come in and that's the fun part because you can really take your time and play around and get some new sounds, unusual things. The, the original sound is just the pure sound maybe better for this part, for this section than having the, there should be, know, the double. The whole idea is that it, uh, it gets really big and then it should come down. Right. Very, right. Very so the pure intimate. thing maybe a little and more intimate and, and you know, yeah. a little more direct. Yeah. The double thing with it with the you know, it beats and it's a little wider. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's quite right. Yeah. Also the song is getting really big now. We want to remember we want to keep the rhythm section in the front. Yeah. We wanna, yeah, we keep it keep it sounding like on. a band and not really get into yeah. all these. Definitely. Let's go for it. may have a, a complete vision in his head but it it, it never it, it's never going to be the way it is in, in the mind's sure. eye it's going to come out different I mean, he knows the process is different. he knows there's going to be a mountain in the sky but yeah. he doesn't know what, what the sky is going to look like yeah. or whether the mountain is going to be uh, in the distance or up front the the song begins to take on a shape and a feeling and color now yeah. and it begins to have a character and that character will influence the way we approach it vocally yeah how we sing how many backgrounds maybe maybe it's so full now that we won't need many backgrounds on this and also the lead vocal May, you know, the lead vocal will now have to be very powerful in order to yeah. match the, the uh, intensity of the track. And the next thing that happens is what? Well, we have to put down vocals and uh, background vocal parts. Uh, we've got most of the instruments on this now. The guitar solos and fills and stuff. This is the final okay. beginning of the final bit. Made um, pretty quick again. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. There have been some one-takers, two or three one-takers of leads and things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to do the chorus, right? Right. Yeah, just fix. The, which one are we doing? Just the first. First or second? We'll fix the second. Okay. okay. The phones are happening, by the way. Good. They're just fine. Great. Woo! Woo! Okay, I'll send it down to you. All right. Mm-hmm.
Start again. Okay, just do one more. What's the balance like? It's all right. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. One more? Yeah. Your voices are opening up now. Sure. When you wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning and you hear, like, if that ain't off, right. around and around your head, you'd like to turn it off. If, you, if you're in anything, doing anything that intensely, I mean, it doesn't even have to be music or art or whatever. It can be a businessman can have that, you know, uh, anybody that's deeply involved in their work. It's very hard to get away from it. And it takes some of the fun out of it, for sure. But uh, to accomplish something like this, you know, I, I'll pay the price anytime. Sounded good. It's oh, a beautiful that's, thing. That's beautiful. That's what we do. I think we should double it. Okay, let's double it. Okay. We're ready. Oh, that was that was wonderful. Sounded good to me. Okay, so should we come in and listen to it? Why don't you come in? Oh, okay, fine. So just what is doubling? Well, basically, what it is, it's um, you you uh, have the original track, the one you just recorded, and you put uh, exactly the same thing on another track, and the idea is to thicken it out. You you either change the balance or you change the sound slightly, and the um, the end result is you have a much thicker texture. It sounds it always sounds like more people, but it smooths it out. It gives a, a sort of a a nice sort of sheen, if you like, especially with vocals, you know, you get them to to just have like different inflections in the voices and stuff like that. It's it's really, it's it's widely used, but if you use it in the right place, it can be really effective. I wonder if we could make a person like me who can't sing <laughs> be able to sing. We'll have to try it. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 That sounded so, good. The last back round. Yep, that's about it, huh? One more thing to do. Right. So what happens now? You're going to listen to this and decide if you're going to go back and do it again? Yeah, we, ju I just we should hear it once. Hear it my own, uh, yeah, sure. Just to make sure it's right. Listen to it Although I trust this man right here. Yeah. Okay, let's have a listen. Okay. Well, am I ready for this? Get your words together. Are you ready? My words. Hold on. Let me see if I can find them. I got it. Okay. All right. Give it a shot. Check. Check. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, one, two, one, two. Yeah. Actually, it sounds really good. Great. Okay. One thing. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> hope so. Yeah. You do that all the time? Oh, yeah. Gotta open up a little bit. in trouble. No, no, no. It's all right. We usually do more than that. <laughs> When you're standing in front of the microphone, you really do have to think about things like proximity to the microphone, um, being on pitch, you know, making sure that even though you have whatever you got going, that you're, you're not singing off in left field somewhere. And uh, you have to control the emotion. At the same time you do that, you have to do something that goes beyond intellect or beyond any thinking. And you have to do something that's inspired and that you can't describe. You need to make it. people on the album cover and they had some ideas and we, we, we seldom feel comfortable with other people's uh, perceptions of us and uh, we usually rebel against it and you know uh, they had some ideas and it wasn't quite clicking and all of a sudden you know we just we said H2O and it seemed right and it was perfect and we thought oh, that's so obvious and it just seemed right for the album. 